Hello everyone, Dr. Triya here. Welcome back to yet another video where today we will be going over topic infantile spasms. Infantile spasms were first described by William James West. West syndrome became known as a triad of infantile spasms, arrested psychomotor development and hip arrhythmias on EEG. Dr. West described the events as bobbing that cause a complete heaving of head forward toward knees and then immediate relaxing into upright position. This bobbing and relaxing would be repeated alternatively at the intervals of a few seconds and repeated from 10 to 20 or more times at each attack. Etiologies of infantile spasms Infantile spasms are classified either symptomatic or cryptogenic based on whether an underlying etiology can be found. Cortical dysplasia is the most common cause of symptomatic infantile spasm, accounting for up to 30% of perinatal causes. Hydrocephalus, Sturge Weber syndrome, tuberous sclerosis, meningitis and encephalitis are also potential causes. Perinatal injuries like hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy and neonatal hypoglycemia have also been implicated in the development of infantile spasms. Congenital infections such as toxoplasmosis, syphilis, cytomegalovirus are also potential causes. Other CNS malformation that may result in uh, infantile spasms include cerebral dysgenesis as seen in Accardi syndrome, Lysenkefeli as in Miller-Dicker syndrome which is seen in gross axial section in the upper picture, holoprosencephaly as seen in the lower picture and hemimegalencephaly. Many inborn errors of metabolisms are associated with infantile spasms. In countries where phenylketonuria is not detected by newborn metabolic screening, infantile spasms is common manifestation of this disorder. Dihydropterine reductase deficiency, Menke's disease, cytochrome C oxidase deficiency, histidinemia, peroxidase deficiency and urea cycle disorders are also other important causes. There are three types of spasm which is observed in West syndrome. The first terms flexor spasm consists of sudden flexion of neck trunk, arms and legs and contraction of the abdominal muscles. This contraction may be severe enough to cause the torso to jackknife at the waist. The second type of spasm, extensor spasm consists of abrupt ex extension of the neck and trunk with abduction or adduction of the arms and legs. The third type of spasm, mix flexure and extensor spasms usually consist of the flexion of the neck, trunk and arms and extension of the legs. The extent and the intensity of the seizures vary. 80% of the spasms occur in clusters consisting of 2 to 125 events at a rate of as many as 13 events per minute. Cluster tend to occur following the arousal rather than during sleep. Although clinical symptoms may vary from patient to patient, there is almost always a hip arrhythmia on the EEG. Speaking of the EEG, hip arrhythmias is characterized by very chaotic and high amplitude asynchronous slow waves. In combination of high amplitude slow waves, we will also observe irregular multifocal spikes and polyspikes. The hip arrhythmia patterns initially found in the sleep record eventually presenting itself in the awake record also. Speaking of the management of the infantile spasms, steroid therapy is often first line of treatment along with vigabatrin. If spasms continue despite these efforts, other anti-seizures medications that may helpful include valproate, topiramate, zonisamide and clonazepam. This medication should only be considered if the first line of treatment fails. That's all about today's video. I hope you all understood and learned well. Please let me know what other topics you would like to learn from me. Till that time, take care of yourself, study hard as well as study smart. Bye.